Hello, welcome to Samsung Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. Today, we're going to look at a video, reaction videos about the US election. So, as you know, now that Donald Trump is, Donald Trump is the president elect of the United States of America, 47 president elect. So, I actually projected that he was going to win anyway. So if you know, I wasn't one of those people who follow the corporate media and the propaganda and staff I was listening to the the people who were going to vote. Not, not the ultimately were the people, not the the corporate media is that they were going to vote and they were going to determine the outcome of this election and they voted and yeah. I didn't see any you know, this uh, Madam President coming. But, you know, let's react to some people who are very cocky about their predictions. One of them is the political analysts that I say, you know, don't actually, that's the reason why you shouldn't actually uh, listen to political analysts. Things like this voting where people vote according to their conscience and what they believe in. Um, yeah, not correct. Most people probably when they were asked who they were going to vote for, I think what they did, they probably did what they did many years ago when they didn't want to vote for a black person many years ago in America. People used to lie about who they're going to vote for. They say, yeah, we're going to vote for him. Yeah, we're going definitely going to vote for him. Those many years before Barack Obama, but yeah, the way his people like that so in America that day when they were polled, they would lie about the intentions. And I think at this time it was similar because people knew Donald Trump, and they just didn't want to say it openly that they were going to vote for Donald Trump because you can see that he won convincingly, popular vote. I mean, I predicted that he probably going to be close. He's going to he. Would was going to be a winner I predicted he was going to be the winner which was correct but the margin of win I thought it was going to be close but not quite but he'd still be trumpet around 287 but you know this one was huge he won popular vote 36 years the first president elect a Republican 36 years to win popular vote let that sink in a little bit just think about it those people who've been touting all this felony and stuff like that just think about that okay just think about that and stop undermining voters voters don't undermine them okay so that's not going to help anybody to undermine people who are going to vote it's you must respect people's opinion you must respect people what whether you like it or not that's why it's called democratic society unless you you're talking about communist where people are told what to do but in a democratic society people are, have their own brains they're free thinking they're critical thinker they vote according to their own interest okay yeah Okay, so we're closing in on almost 5 p.m. Eastern time, and I've been tracking everything that's been going on across the country today. And my most important encounter was when I <laughs> went out to get my champagne. Uh, I was talking to the guy in the store, of course, uh, asking him, did he vote? And he said he did early voting, and he asked me if I early voted. Uh, and uh, he asked me, you know, why I was getting the champagne and I said because I'm going to be toasting Madam President tonight and he just looked at me with kind of like a smirk on his face and I said you know she's she's going to win this right and he says oh well it's very very close and I said no it's not he says well what do you mean I said no it's not the women of America are making their voices heard reproductive rights is what it all comes down to and the women are voting in numbers relative to men that are unbelievable. She's won this. And I said to him, she's going to take every one of the swing states plus, oh, plus Iowa. And he said, oh, but the numbers are so close. I said, I'm a political analyst. I'm telling you right now, the numbers are there. She's taking this election. And then I said to him, you realize, and he didn't tell me who he voted for, but of course I knew. And I said, you do realize you wasted your vote, right? <laughs> 
I didn't care. And I walked out with my bottle of champagne and happily walked home. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>
won them. They let it update and I showed you. He's already won all of them. So this is an update. So this video is old, obviously, but yeah, just giving you all the update that he's won all of them. So there's no doubt now. From the Harris campaign was that she would make up ground on Joe Biden, right. Joe Biden's suburbs. Donald Trump actually did better. We'll break down some of these numbers, but the gender gap was not nearly as wide as the Harris campaign needed to be. And Latino men came out right. in force for Donald Trump. Boy, what a huge difference that made. And, you know, that was really just, just part of the stunning uh, outcome. I mean, America, first of all, is for more to the right than any time in our lifetimes, even going back to the Reagan years. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump won in dominating fashion, but he did, did that along with other Republican candidates in the Senate races and the House races. They're likely to dominate all branches of government for the next several years. And Donald Trump not only broke out uh, through that, that sort of hard ceiling of 47, 48 percent. Think about this. He became only the second Republican to win a majority of the popular vote since 1988 in 36 years. And he did so after a week of polls, most notably Ann Seltzer's revered Des Moines Register poll, showed Harris making remarkable inroads among the type of voters who would swing the margin for Harris in the blue wall states. The opposite actually ended up being true. Donald Trump won in a rout across Big Ten country, taking Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin without a serious fight. And now with expectations rising in the Harris camp in the final days of the campaign in a historic ground game, when you look at the depth of it and the reach of it, this race still ended up being over before it began. And Jonathan Lemire, I mean, it is, again, the, the scope and scale of this victory is sweeping. And we can, we can focus, by the way, we can focus on Donald Trump if we would like, but this goes so far beyond Donald Trump. Make no mistake, his victory, again, historic. But you look at Republicans across the nation. You look at Handley, how Handley they're winning states. As Willie said, you look at Illinois, a four-point margin. <laughs> Illinois, a five-point margin in New Jersey. This is a Democratic Party uh, that has been uh, just wiped out this morning. Yeah, Republicans is wrong. I think the more relevant question actually is what is wrong with America? I think um, what is wrong with our country that the Republican Party would choose as a candidate and support a candidate who is an insurrectionist, who is an election denier, who is someone who is twice impeached, a 34-time convicted felon, um, someone who has been accused of alleged sexual misconduct by 26 women, uh, found liable for sexual abuse. Uh, what is wrong with this country that they would choose a message of divisiveness, of xenophobia, of racism, of misogyny, <laughs> over a message of inclusiveness, a message for the people, by but the people, on, of the people. That is what the problem is. It's the Republican the vote. Party. But can I, can I, what's can wrong I with say America? something before? We can yeah. do a second. The, the Democrats are the ones. They are the the, the, the party that cares for the blue collar. Exactly. The, the Democrats are the ones who. No, the view. Oh my God. <laughs> Something's wrong with the view. The American have decided. They've decided. What is wrong with you all? You must accept and respect the vote. Stop insulting people and asking questions and insulting them, calling them xenophobic, all of that. That was the reason why, in fact, in South Africa, a lot of political parties, especially EFF, far lefty, that was going on and telling South Africans that, oh, yeah, you're xenophobic if you don't want certain migrants in your community. But it's not going to help. And it didn't help them. Overwhelmingly, people rejected it. South African rejected it. That South Africans they rejected that. So just don't insult voters, please. Don't insult voters. You can see, you know, there's so many reasons to analyze what went wrong. We know what went wrong. I know what's wrong. Went wrong is that you just were playing on the identity. They were not really providing a solution for people's problem.
and they were there's a lot of millions and millions numbers it's in the millions of illegal migrants in america that's going to have impact on who are the people who are going to be affected are migrants migrants who are all, already have been who are established in America, who have been there in America and legally have applied to get to America, they did the right way to get there, they're the one going to be affected by this higher number of migrants. So when you have a negative sentiments amongst around migration, it affects the people that already are migrants in that community, that those who have come earlier, it affects them as well negatively people might want to say i oh, know we're not uh, talking about we're talking about but you know it does affect psychologically it does a lot more harm to the people that have already been there they can see these migrants coming in and doing all this sort of stuff and they realize wait a minute why are they being allowed to come to the country in in easy way we had to do it the tough way we had to apply we had to do a lot of things to get to america and they get to just rock up and they get to be given all this money to stay in hotels and yada yada to be uh, uh, dropped in some cities no so you can see why certain uh, migrants especially the latino went to donald trump there's a lot of reason why they went to Donald Trump as well, but some of them is to do with this migration and black voters as well. It affected a lot of the minority groups in America. So it's something that you guys, the Democrats, you need to go back to the drawing board. You need to go back now and see what you're doing when you actually are elected. What are the things that you do for the people that elected you? How are you making their life better? It's all put in Social Security, Medicare, Medicare, Medicaid, union protection, ACA. unemployment insurance and Obamacare. The Republican Party doesn't give a rat's patootie well, about it. They didn't Come on. The voters so yeah. all, I can deduce, all I can deduce is that it's the messaging. It didn't get through to people. They're not paying attention. That's all. Yeah, because it, the Democrats have always been for the working people. Exactly. And the Republicans don't care about it. I think the, the message of the Democrats sounded elitist. You don't value have value in the society they if you don't sounded have a college that way, degree. But when you look at the but proof, yeah, but, 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 but Joy, no it's condescending. It's, it's condescending. The there is a there is What's a condescending. The, the way that the left speaks to its voters, it, it really is a message of joy and inclusiveness. That's no, the message of not, not being educated, being America. dumb, and what's wrong with America. <laughs> Who said <laughs> that? Funny just did. What is wrong with joy. America? My point here is that that's not what Kamala Harris. No, no, no. My point. My point is, I don't blame Joe Biden. I don't blame Kamala Harris. Go back as far as you want. I believe, um, I blame a messaging within the Democratic Party. You don't blame well, the Republican Party Can I just Party finish my point, please? I obviously have a problem. Anyone has a problem with Donald Trump. The bigger question should be, yes, Sonny, why did they vote for him? Yes. In sweeping... So they need to be introspective. No, no, no. We need to be introspective. If we voted for they Kamala Harris, we need to say, offer. what didn't resonate with the voters? Do you know what didn't resonate with the voters? When they were saying we don't feel safe and the left focused on defund the police and bail reform. Yeah. When they said they we're also, worrying they about... Were also can I just finish? Real, let, me just, let me just finish real quickly. When they were focused on... Re Only an hour show, ladies. <laughs> Joy, when they were focused <laughs> on renaming schools, there were people saying, hey, students are destroying colleges. I paid for that. I sent them there. They can't learn. And everyone apologized for it and didn't want to attend to it. They also denied the border was a crisis and kept saying, no, 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 it's fine. This is not a... The, there was the a border bill, though. There was the a border bill. Yes, but Joy, my point is they screamed and screamed and screamed. They didn't vote for him because he's a racist or a misogynist. They voted because they needed help in their everyday yeah, lives. But Sarah, they they made, they the majority of all right, that's correct, what she said. They needed help. That is actually similar with what South Africans we're going are going through even now. And I think in the next election, the ANC, the DA, all of you, if you don't settle the border issue, the crisis you're having there, and all of those kids were dying because of these um, poisonous food that are unregulated for uh, illegal migrants who are selling these poo food to, to kids in South Africa who are dying from it. You're going to see electoral bloodbath in the next election. It is pretty much this one it's similar to south african experience it not so much as australian experience but it is very much in par to what's going on right now in south africa this aren't high enough 
issues that around security and the people that come into the country, the level of, the level of crimes they get to commit, the feeling of insecurity, it is real. And a, a president, a real president must take it seriously. So if you're president, you don't take it seriously, you're going to be toppled. Only the party that is going to be centre-right or far-right, that's going to be for the people of South Africa, will be the trumpet party that will govern on its own. That's my saying. That's all I'm going to say about that. It is similar to what you're seeing right now. Right now, what you're seeing in America, exactly what I predict would happen in South Africa in the next couple, five years from now, in the next election. People don't, the elite, liberal elite don't listen. They actually condescending. The problem is to condescending and demean voters. When people need help, they need help. You must listen. Stop undermining voters. You're going to get this. Because there's a every of, stat coming out on the people yeah. willing to self-reflect are showing these. Oh, wait, they're going to say I'm a racist and a misogynist in the exit You really think, think so. 74 right. million Joy. people are racist. Who's every say every that? racist and misogynist voted for Donald Trump. Not everyone that voted for Donald Trump was a racist and misogynist. I agree with that. Everyone swept. They swept every category. And the reason they did is to say, hey, guys, no excuses this time. Yeah. Look, they lost everything. There's still a country that allows doesn't its environment to be ravaged, its children to be shot, its wealth to be hoarded, its worker to be exploited, its poor to starve, its cops to murder. So you think America's it's a the country problem? In, prob uh, in trouble. It's so America's so the problem and the voters are the problem. And hold it for the next segment, right? Mm. We'll be right back. Hold it. Yeah.